Hello, girls. How are you? Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. How's it going? All good? Perfect. That's better. I see both of you then. Okay. Uh, good to see you. Let me give me one second. I'm just going to I'm just going to forward uh, the document that I prepared for you. Just bear with me a second while I figure okay. figure this out. Where were where were you where were you travelling this weekend? You said you were playing away somewhere over the Easter holiday. No, she was. She went to visit her dad for the weekend. Ah, okay, okay. I know there was a lot of competitions um, this past weekend in different sports, so I just presumed that that's what you yeah. were doing. She played the week before in East London, so she just came back from a tour. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, world championship selection nice okay that's good that's exciting do you you, you feel like um is that you're already in the squad or they're actually doing the selections well they're doing the SAA selection yeah i see the SA team selection, yeah. got it got it got it oh, very cool very cool all right so i've just sent you i just sent you the um um What's it called? The the document that I created. So can you can you open that up on your on your laptop or your or your or a phone there? Oh, hopefully it's big enough and you can see it. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what I'll do is. Um, I'm going to go through that. Just have a quick look through so you can familiarize yourself. Most of the important information is on page three and four, I believe. Um, so if you take a look at that, then we'll be in good shape. Um, okay, have a quick look. I've just got to do something. One second, give me a moment. And then I will explain all of the details to you. Okay, so basically, um, a lot of some of that's probably not very clear. So I'll explain it all to you. Um, but you've got a lot of options. So just to double check, you finished school the end of twenty twenty four, correct? Already. So potentially you could come here January of twenty five or August of twenty five. The only difference with it is the following. There's two two things that we need to be conscious of if you come January or August. Um, to come for January of 25, you would be you would basically be in the team um, of from August 24. Okay, obviously you're still you'll still be in school at that time until November or December. But what happens? Obviously, Northern Hemisphere universities and schools all start in August or September. You know, whereas Southern Hemisphere, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Argentina, they they all start in uh, sort of January, February. Um, so it's not a big deal. You're not going to miss out on classes because of the way that they do university here. Um, it's not like you're sitting in the same class of mathematics for four years with the same group of people. You'll do classes for three or six months. You get to the end of it, you do an exam, and then you take those credits, you put them in your pocket, and you'll never do that class again. Yeah. Okay. So if you start in January or in August, it doesn't matter. Um, you're basically accumulating the credits pertaining to what you're going to study or what your, your qualification will be in bachelor's. So say it's engineering or medicine or law, you're going to do the classes that will accumulate enough credits to get that bachelor's degree. So it doesn't matter if you start a little bit later, you'll just finish a little bit later at the end of your, your four years. Okay. Um, 
even some people do classes during the summer break so that they can do a four year degree in, in three years. It's quite common. Um, so that, that's the first thing. Second thing is if you arrive in August, meaning August of 25, um, you can do that. But in the NCAA, which you'll see the ones with the blue, the blue logo where it says NCAA, those three divisions, they give you only a five year window to do a four year degree with scholarship. Okay, so obviously if you arrive in August, that means you've lost eight months, right? So it's just something to be conscious of, not a big problem, but if you're in the middle of your bachelor's degree and you need to, I don't know, take a year off or you fail a bunch of classes, then you've got no wiggle room to, to recover that time, okay? Just want you to be aware of that. So that's two things to consider. Um, now, with the different divisions, as you can see there, you've got the Ivy League on the left, then you've got NCAA 1, 2, and 3, NAIA, NJCAA is JUCO, Junior College, and the CCCAA is California Community Colleges. So that's specific okay. for California. JUCO and California are basically the same, but in California, they have a different set of rules for a few different things. It's a very liberal state the taxes are a little bit higher so they have some intricacies that are different from the rest of the country okay yeah. um so why are you so why have i put an x under california and then the ncaa division one two and three i'll explain briefly briefly why um you've got a, you've got options you would probably get a lot of um interest from schools in those four divisions. Firstly, the California colleges, the, at the junior college level, California is the only place that does water polo, okay? okay? The rest of the country at the junior college level, the, the schools simply don't play the sport, okay? JUCO and California Community College are two-year institutions. So that's where, you, okay. that's where you'd get something called an associate's degree. I don't know if it's something similar in your country. Um, there are usually, traditionally, um, like uh, uh, technical schools. You know, they, they were originally created for anybody graduating high school that wanted to get some kind of further education, um, more so in a vocational qualification. Something like uh, okay. hairdressing or you know, skin care, in construction to a certain level as well, um, you know, basics of engineering, that kind of stuff. Um, nowadays, it's quite common. All of those schools, nowadays, you can do your first two years of a bachelor's degree for something more academic. Um, and then at, at the end of two years, you would transfer to a four-year school to do year three and four okay. and complete your, complete your bachelor's, which would be the NAIA or the NCAA schools. Okay. okay, makes sense. Um, the the NAIA doesn't have any water polo teams. There's literally, I think, two universities in the entire country in the NAIA system that do water polo. So again, you, I didn't even bother putting you on there. Um, and again, similar with the NJCAA, the JUCO. So those two groups, they just don't do water polo. Um, Ivy League does do water polo. However, academically, I just don't think you're going to go there. You're not quite at that level. Um, yeah. and, I, and I'll explain why. The exam scores that you gave me basically convert into a 3.0 GPA. You see that just underneath where it says NCAA? Um, so that's basically like more or less a 75% in your exams. To go to an Ivy League school, you need to be like a 3.9 or a 4.0, which is basically 100% on your exam results. So they are very, very difficult schools to get into. Okay. Um, to give you an example, the SAT target I gave of 1,200. Okay, that's, that's normal. It's just above average. Um, I have students, clients and friends, uh, children of my friends, one of them had a 1570 on the SAT out of 1600, which is the maximum score. Um, and he applied for the top 20 universities in America. He only got accepted to one of them. 
Okay, that's how difficult that's how difficult it is to get into those schools. The kid's a genius, and he still didn't get, get accepted by nearly all of them. Um, so, just to give you an idea, now, um, and, and I'll go to this in a, in a few bit more detail shortly. Basically, if you get above a two point eight in your GPA, most of the NCAA schools will accept you. Okay, um, so that's why you've got. A possible a possibility of all three divisions. Um, the difference between these three divisions, Division One obviously is the best athletic uh, facilities, the best, the most amount of money that is spent um, in the sports facilities and the coaching and all of that is the NCAA Division One. That's where all your Olympic athletes are coming from, your NFL football players, your NBA boss, you know, the top top athletes in the country and potentially in the world go to those schools. Okay. If there's anything you need as an athlete to make you better, you're going to find them in a D1 school. Okay, that's where people use America's Division One to polish their skills before they go play professionally somewhere. Yeah. All right. Um, mainly, main difference between Division One and Division Two schools tend to be a little bit smaller in Division Two. But when I say smaller, I'm talking instead of sixty thousand students on campus. There might be only 30,000 students on campus. They're still very big schools in the, in the big scheme of things. Um, a little bit less money to spend on the athletic department. And usually within the scholarship systems, to give you an example, say a, a team has 25 people on their roster, 11 might get schol a full scholarship availability in Division 1, but only 9 in Division 2. So that's the budget that the coaches can work with is slightly different from Division One, Division Two. Okay, um, to go a little bit further in depth on that, if a school, on average, I'll give you an example, say fifty thousand dollars per year, is the cost to go to a school for one year. Okay, um, a college coach in Division One, if they've got an eleven scholarships at fifty thousand dollars, that means they've got five hundred and fifty thousand dollars to distribute amongst the different athletes in their squad of 25, okay? Yeah. In a division two, it might only be nine kids, therefore 450 instead of 550. So it's just amount, it's a bit like in professional sports where a team has a salary cap and they're only allowed to spend a certain amount of money on the whole team collectively. It's a similar kind yeah. of mentality, okay? Division three are very good athletically Obviously not as good as one and two, but very good. But the difference is you only get your scholarship based on your academic ability. Okay. So you can be a superstar in the sport, but if you're very good academically, division three is a good option because you tend to get bigger scholarships based on your academic ability. So again, okay. they're, they're a little bit like they're one step behind Ivy League academically. Okay, and, and you, you, you have the potential to go there. Okay. Okay. For, for me, um, if you do go there, they tend to, uh, because they only give you academic scholarship, if you do extremely well in your SAT exam, right? Say you, I put a target of 1,200, but say you get like a 1,400 on the SAT. It's not quite enough to go to the Ivy League, but it's very good for the D3 schools. And then you might you might be able to max out on the academic scholarship money in D3. Yeah. Okay. So th those are some of the differences between those schools. You, in my opinion, based on what we've seen so far, you're going to get some interest from a variety of schools in each of those four divisions. Okay. It's just a case of, for you, you know, what, what the priority is. When those schools come to us and say, hey, we're interested... Then it's a case of you looking at at the options, looking at the different subjects in that school, right? The locations of those schools, what's more attractive for you, right? What are the facilities like? And then absorbing the information that the coach gives you and get an understanding for that coach's personality when you have a conversation with them, okay? That, that, that will help you make decisions on where you want to go. Sometimes it's simply a gut feeling. Sometimes it's the personality of the coach. I've seen kids be dead set 
you know, on a, on a particular school based on what they see. And then the minute they have a conversation with a coach, changes the opinion completely. You know, that's a very personal thing. And, and do you fit in their culture? Do, do you enjoy the time you spent with a coach? It, it can make a big difference. Um, it really can make a make or break a situation. Um, so yeah, I'm very comfortable that you'd be able to get into all four of those types of schools. Again, we'll just we'll figure it out as we go. Um, the numbers underneath, Alec, that's, I don't like the way that we lay this one out, but um, basically we're thinking somewhere between six to sixteen or seventeen to twenty-five, depending on the school. I'll explain it in the in page four. If you want to, if you want to skip down to page four, there's a timeline and then underneath that, there's some additional notes. So uh, this, this kind of breaks it down a little bit more detailed for you. Um, so I'll read it out to you and then just interrupt me when something doesn't make sense, okay? Um, so you've, yeah. got a, you've got a lot of options. Um, you would need to, to hit the following, get the following statistics for these four types of schools, okay? So a 50 meter swim, of less than 25.2. Now, uh, you didn't give me a current speed in the assessment form from what I saw, uh, but that's what you need to be aiming for or get something very close to that, all right? NCAA Division I uh, water polo coaches, they're really looking for that number, 25.2 or less over, over 15, 50 meters. Someone, someone trying to call you. <laughs> All good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, try, try and try and aim to get to 25. If you get to 26, 27, that's not going to be a disaster. But that's the target ultimately to get to a top Division One school. Okay. okay. And uh, what else? Uh, GPA of 3.3.0 is good based on that first term of school year. That's going to for sure allow you to the CCCAA and the NCAA. 2.8 I already mentioned is the minimum required for the NCAA schools. For the California Community Colleges, and I don't wish this on you, but if you have a disaster in school for the next year or so, you can still go to the CCCAA, so long as you graduate school. All right? Um, I don't expect that. It seems like you're a pretty stable student. Um, but yeah, 3.0 is where you are right now. 2.8 is the minimum. So let's start pushing a little bit on the, on the GPA. Try and get your average scores up. And, and we'll be in a slightly better place, okay? Um, okay, top water polo schools are generally looking for women over five foot seven. You're already at five foot eight, according to the measurements you sent me. Uh, so you've checked that box off for coaches too. This is just a very general thing that coaches ask for. They always say how tall, and because they're usually looking for someone over five seven. Um, it depends very slightly on the position, but generally you, you should be fine. And if you keep growing a little bit more, even better. So get your, get, your, get plenty of sleep so you can grow a little bit more. It'll give you an advantage. Um, so we can go to the California Community Colleges. We think between 12 and 16 per year would be your worst case scenario. Those schools are about twenty to $30,000 per year, including your living, your living accommodations. Okay, so at least a 50% scholarship is what we're expecting in a good California community college. Okay, the, NC, the NCAA schools, limited, but if you okay, they're, they're a bit more limited. So NCAA, you've got the three divisions. Those divisions are based on the academics, uh, the athletic situation. Within those divisions, there are schools where you only need 1,050 on the SAT. In the same division, there are schools that need a 1370 in the SAT, okay? okay. So the, if you get, say you get 1,100, that's not the end of the world. It just means that in the division, the three divisions, you might be looking at the lower level academic schools within those divisions. You might not be okay. able to go to the top ones. Um, so again, getting your GPA up a little bit more is good. And then the SAT score, just trying to get the maximum possible. Um, yeah. and, and really, if you studied hard with your English and mathematics specifically, that can make a big difference and increase your SAT. Now, yeah. um, I'll give you an example of a school, Tennessee, Lee University in Tennessee is one that I know the numbers specifically. 
if you get 1100 on the SAT, you can get into that school. They open the door, they say, yes, you would be accepted there and you can go, yeah. right? If you get over 1250 in that school, they give you a $10,000 scholarship just based on your academic result. So, you know, that school I believe is $42,000 per year, okay? Say the college coach, uh, the water polo coach gives you $20,000 in scholarship money for the sport. So it goes from 42 down to 22. And then you come with an SAT score of 1270, right? Because you got more than 1250, you not only get accepted, but you get an extra $10,000 in scholarships. So then it goes from 22 down to 12. So again, that SAT score can make a massive difference in your in how much you're gonna spend, okay? That was just an example of one school. Um, I coach at a school called St. Thomas University here in Miami as a rugby as a rugby coach. And theirs, they don't do it based on the SAT. They do it on the GPA. So for example, in that school, they do, if it's above a 2.5 GPA, they give you $8,000 in scholarship money academically. If it's over a three, if it's over a 3.5, they give you 13,000 scholarship money in, in academics. So every, again, every school is slightly different in how they approach it, but I guess that, that's what we're there for. But we want you to sort of obviously get the highest scores possible so then we can we can go to the schools knowing that, you know, you're going to get that much money uh, to go to those schools with your scores. Makes yeah. sense. Um, so uh, let me see what, what else I wrote. Though the SAT schools will come down to 40. Okay, so the, the NCAA schools are like forty to $60,000 a year normally. We reckon we can get you at least down to sixteen to twenty in the NCAA schools based on your abilities at the moment. Okay, so... It's pretty good. There's a lot of money they're going to give you. Um, <laughs> so, you know, with, with that in mind, those two numbers, 12 to 16 on the California and 16 to 20 on the NCAA, they're the worst yeah. case scenario. That's as bad as it's yeah. going to get based on the information today. Now, you might get faster at swimming. You might get better at the sport. Uh, yeah. you, you may grow a little more. Your your exams, hopefully, would it slowly increase because we're going to give you the focus and the targets here. So you're going to go pretty hard at you know um, in, in trying to improve. It's a, you've got an objective now, and you know what, yeah, you know what the reality is. So it, this is me kind of giving you a kick in the backside and sort of saying, okay, this is what this is your opportunity. Head down, get to work. You know, um, I think. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And it just gives you it just gives you that focus. So, um, you know, those swimming targets, we expect coaches will track your profile this next year. So when we if we start working with you, we would create your profile online. OK, and yeah. um, get the highlight video together, put the statistics together and we can start putting your name and face out to the college coaches yeah. and they start to track you. They start to follow what you're doing. And every time you give us new information, maybe a new video or some more statistics, we resend your profile to those coaches. And then it's just marketing. It's just them remembering your face and your name so that when it gets to where are we at on the timeline for you, you know, round about, let's see, the January 24, yeah, round about late 20, late 23, early 24, when they start making yeah. decisions, they've seen you three, four, five times, and they know who you are. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, if this team, then this will also add on. Is, if she makes the next, so then they'll go to Greece in February, and then they will go to Greece in July. Okay, nice, good. So all of that stuff, not just the fact that you're doing it, but like the video content that you can get from it. So. Yeah. So when we create the highlight video in the beginning, the, the girls next door, we've got a team of three girls and a guy that all they do all day is create the content for our webpage and the highlight videos for the clients. Okay. Yeah. So we will take what you've got today and make that profile and put it out there. And when you come, exactly. The following months, we get a couple of other things. We add it to it, resend it. And it's, ah, I remember that girl. Yeah. I remember she was swimming at this competition, blah, 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 blah. So by the time it gets to the end of 2023 and they start making decisions, 
you're the top of the mind. Your your name is one of the first that they think of. That's the that's the idea. Um, so yeah, I mean that that's basically it. The a couple of things I want to mention. The bottom of page three. Uh, some of the some of the expenses that you're going to come across um, through throughout the next year. So there's the scholarship for the school and and those prices, like I said, 12 to 16 or 16 to 20 at NCAA. Those are the, the that's the cost of the school. These things here are things that you need to do during the process over the next couple of years. So these expenses are things that you should add into your budget that you'll probably need to do over the next uh, year or two, okay? okay? The exam for the SAT, I always recommend to at least do it once, possibly twice, you know? Um, that exam, you can take it as many times as you want, okay? okay. Uh, but it's $150, so keep that in mind. Okay. The, the NCAA Clearing House, I've put that in the timeline. That's basically the school system doing a background check on you, making sure you are who you say you are. OK, yeah. that you've attended a certain school, that you've played for a certain team so that you're not just inventing yourself so that you can get into yeah. the country. And that's an obligation between the NCAA and the government, basically. You know, so they're not just letting anybody in. Um, uh, transcript verification that basically when you get to the end of school, your matric year, um, you'll have to verify your exam scores um, with the American system. And there's usually a third party company that the school works with and you have to pay them and they take your matric from South Africa and convert into the American system. That's There's no way around that. You shouldn't have to do the translations just because I think most South African schools do everything in English when they're actually giving the documents, don't they? So, so you won't need to do that. The visa, $450, that's the embassy. So you go into the embassy with all of your paperwork, your scholarship offer from the school, we'll help you prepare for that. And then you walk in, give them the paperwork, pay $450, and then you'll get your passport back with a, a visa, a student visa specifically, so that you can come here legally with no problems. Um, insurance. Again, is something to think about. You don't have to worry too much now because it's not something you need to do until you arrive, but be conscious yeah. of it. Medical and dental insurance is right now, it's about $1,000 a year for a youngster. Um, someone like myself at 43, it's literally four times more expensive than that. It, it gets, gets more expensive the older you get. Um, and then obviously flights to get here. We put 500 on there, but it could be depending on the pricing of flights at the time, you know, yeah. that can fluctuate dramatically. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So you, you're good there. You might, you, you can, you can get around that. I'm sure. Um, and, and get some good pricing. That's great. Um, so those are the things that you'll come across on the left hand side. What does the scholarship include? Obviously the price that you pay includes the tuition the on-campus housing, meals. The housing and meals can fluctuate between a school. So for example, you, you might you might be happy with the basic living conditions where you know it's you sharing a room with somebody and the you know breakfast and dinner kind of plan. But it, it's a bit like going on vacation where you, you might get an all-inclusive and the nicer hotel room. It's the same kind of thing. They'll usually have two options at least in the university. Um, okay. And they'll pay you basically, like I mentioned earlier, if a school costs 42,000 and the scholarship is 32,000 and the other 10 is out of your pocket, it might be a little bit more if you want the nicer apartment, um, okay. you know, with your own room, yeah. things like that, it depends. And it also depends from state to state. Like if you're in downtown Manhattan or Miami, it's incredibly expensive to, to live there. So the, the, the cost of a place to stay, even if it's on campus, can vary wildly from somewhere like Miami to Iowa in the middle of nowhere, you know, in, in farmland. Um, so yeah, be, you have to be conscious of that. So it does fluctuate, fluctuate a lot. But as the schools contact us, we'll tell you, these are the subjects you can study at that school. This is the location. This is the pricing. And then you can make your decisions based on, you know, what you want from life. Um, Books are usually included. Nowadays, they tend to just give you a laptop of some form. Um, it's just more common. Um, team travel. So as you're traveling around for tournaments, that's usually covered by the school. 
Um, if it's a funded program, a varsity program, all of that hotels, flights, that kind of stuff is usually paid for by the university. Now, some division three schools, like I mentioned, the D3 schools are more academic. They might be like, um, like a club sport. So maybe you might have to do like fundraising if you win a championship regionally and you're gonna go travel nationally. But for the most part, if you're, if you're with us, and we're speaking at the schools, we're speaking at the coaches that are serious about recruiting. Yeah. It's because they're, you know, it's a more serious program. Um, yeah. So that's usually covered. Um, and then any administration fees is usually covered as well. Um, mm, mm, what else? Uh, the timeline, that, that timeline's pretty flexible, um, but just gives you an idea of month and year that you should be doing certain things. Um, registering for the exams, is, is a big part of it, especially the SAT. Um, the earlier you do an SAT, the better. Um, coaches won't make a decision on a scholarship unless you've got the SAT score to them. So okay. yeah, that, that, and that one, you know, the college coaches will make a decision at least one year before you arrive. So, okay. you know, you don't, if you're coming January 25, you don't want to be doing the exams in, in May, June of 24, because they've already started making decisions six months before that. And if they've made yeah. decisions and you were not part of that de decision, that means that money's gone to somebody else already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, early, early 23 would be the ideal situation to start your SATs at the latest. You can do one this year if you wanted to. Um, my, just to give you an idea, my eldest son, is 17 he finishes school in the summer of next year 23 he he did his first sat more than a year ago when he was 16 basically yeah. um and he did it again about two months ago and he's going to do another one in um may so okay. he one a year ago one in like march no yeah end of february beginning of march next one he's <laughs> going to do in may and that way his first one was horrible. Last one was a little bit better. I'm expecting the one in May. I've given, yeah, I've given him some SAT classes actually from the tutors in our company, um, uh, and and they're you know they're very good. They're all former Ivy League students, so they're they're phenomenal phenomenal um, uh, students, and now now they work as tutors. So um, yeah, he's had some classes over the last few weeks, so that he's a bit more prepared for the May the May test. And, and from that, I'm expecting a good score. Um, so yeah, th that's the timeline. If again, I did that based on you arriving here in January of 25. Um, so yeah, a lot of those things that I mentioned, you won't have to pay for them until basically late 2024. Like the, the clearing house, the insurance, the flights, the visa, yeah, all of that kind of stuff happens then. But in the in the beginning, it's basically um, the package that you decide to use with us and, um, and and going through those processes through 2022, 2023 um, to get you out there and, and, and in front of those college coaches. Okay. Um, now, did you, did you have a look through our services? Through your? Through, through our services and packages. <laughs> I can I can send you I'll I can send you a link underneath here. Give me one sec. With the um let me see uh what's the page? I'll just click it here, ASN scholarships dot com slash uh there we go. That's Leah. Okay. So you, you should have received the link there. Firstly before we get into that, what um any any specific questions regarding any of the information I've given you so far? Uh, no, nothing for now. Okay. All right. So if you click, open up that link that I just sent, and that should take you to the services, you'll, you'll notice that a lot of the stuff on the timeline from one document kind of matches the services um, in, the, in the different packages that we have. Um, why isn't that opening? Did yours open on your side? Mine didn't open just now. Yeah, it's open. It opened? Hmm, strange. Oh, it was just a yeah. little just a little slow. That's all. I'm here now. 
Um, so a couple of videos, that's not so important, but when you scroll down, there's the different packages. So you've got Platform, Club, Club Plus, Premium, VIP. Um, the, yeah. ti the timeline plan is already done. Like I've already figured that out. We can change it at any point during the, the work we do. Um, and each plan includes that. The online profile and social media promotion, obviously, each plan, every program has that. Once you get down to the yeah. video highlights, one video is is fine three videos would be better over a period of time and that way you're not only getting the um the video but you're getting our team helping you prepare that copy it and, and edit it and do all of the nice stuff making it look good music added you know, all the bells and whistles and we add those yeah. over a period of time um not absolutely vital but definitely worth it i think um, classes with the SAT tutors, again, I think that's important. If you can get SA tutors on your end, sometimes it might be cheaper in terms of the, the rand in comparison to dollar. It might work out beneficial for you. Um, but again, our tutors are very, very good. And that's included in the Club Plus plan. Um, registering for the SAT is not very complicated, but we'll do it for you if you want us to. Basically, the more we do, the, the more it get, more expensive it gets, right? Um, but we'll support you doing it um, in, in the club and the club plus and we'll actually pay for it if you do the, the premium and the VIP plans um, similar thing with the clearing house that's just getting online and spending the time and energy to do it okay it's uh, not difficult it's just time consuming and when we're doing it we're doing it with our eyes closed because we've done it a million times so we know we're going to get it done right um, getting the correct paperwork in um, marketing, the university marketing and connection, that's, that's really the big part of what we're doing. Okay. Um, we're going to be connecting you with, with as many coaches as possible, but more importantly, we're going to connect you with the coaches that we think would be interested in you based on your, you yeah. know, your background, based, based on your abilities. Um, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna speak to you know, college coaches that we don't think will be appropriate for you based on your personality. You know, if I know that you're not, you know, you're not a super outgoing person, maybe you're a quiet person, I'm not going to put you with the coach that's screaming and shouting like a madman all the time, you know. Um, we, we take all of those kind of things into consideration. Um, so, again, we work with nearly 4,000 universities. With water polo, there's only about 120. So we've immediately reduced it down based on the, the sport itself. Now, within that 120, depending on what you want and depending on how your exam scores you go, then we're going to reduce that number down again and it's us directly contacting those co coaches. And we have a team of people in the office here. That's all they do all day is speak to the college coaches. Okay? They're, okay. They're, their job is simply that. So the group chat that we have, when you sign up with us, we will add people from that team into the group chat so that they'll be like, hey guys, keep an eye on your email. You're gonna get an email from coach Billy from such and such school. Uh, make sure you respond appropriately, okay? Um, if you wanted to visit the universities, like if you wanted to maybe bring a va have a vacation over here for a week, and maybe June of next year would be appropriate, that's an option. My opinion is it's an unnecessary expense especially nowadays where we can do these kind of phone calls with coaches, you know, really get to know someone a little bit. It does make a big difference, I'm not gonna lie. If you go into a school and you see the campus, you see the city, it can make a big difference, yeah. you know? But my opinion is you can go around that if you just spend some time and energy doing your research on schools, yeah. you know? Um, but that's, that's included on anything club plus and above. Um, obviously when you, you verbally commit, to a school and, and receive your scholarship offer. We're gonna support you in all of that, regardless of the package you choose. Um, when you're signing the NLI, that's the finalization of your scholarship offer. Um, we support you through all of that. We'll be holding your hand. Um, transcript verifications, translations, all of that stuff I mentioned earlier. Applying to the universities, we'll be helping you with that when you need it. Um, and then, one of the things that maybe differentiates depending on where you're going to go is the support and management. There's, a, there's two things that I want you to, to be aware of here. The, the visa paperwork is 
pretty self-explanatory if you read it properly, right? It, you know, we've all traveled and gone to other countries and you get your passport and blah, blah, blah. That's fine. We can help you with that if you feel the need, if you're maybe not very experienced in traveling in general. However, the really big, in, big part for me in your case, if you decide you want to go to a California community college, Remember I said those schools are, are only for two years and then you have to transfer at the end of the second year to another school. Included in the Club Plus is, is two years of support and management, which also includes transferring to another school. Okay. All right. So that's a big one. If you go to community college in California and at the end of two years you want to transfer, if you don't do it, it basically costs about $3,000 for us to do a transfer. Okay, we, we charge that for, for just do it. Like this morning, a client called or somebody new called and said, hey, I'm at a school. Can you help me do a transfer? And like, yep, yeah, no problem. We can do that. I showed them the packages. It's $3,000 just to do that. Now, if, yeah. you, if you do the Club Plus with us, it's included. So, you know, when you get halfway through your second year at community college, call us up and we'll start the process again to find a new college for year three and four. Because yeah. we're basically going to do the same thing over again. We analyze your video, analyze your GPA, start contacting the schools, build your highlight video, all the same things that you're going through now so that you can change schools. Um, so that's something to consider. So anyway, in that, um, the, the price is here at the bottom. Um, I think club is, is the minimum that you should be doing. Club plus is a good option for you. Um, yeah. it, it's basically 5197 at the beginning and then 2000 when we're almost wrapping it up, basically in a, in a year from now. Okay. Um, there is also, um, there's also the option to, to break that down into sort of a 50% a, a deposit and then the rest paid over 12 months, 18 months. There's the option for that as well. If you didn't want to pay the full 5,000 now, um, we, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, think, I think Club Plus would be the most appropriate for you based on your timeline. My opinion, you should use SAT classes at some point. Um, what I would recommend is take an SAT exam, see what the score is, and then do it again and have some of our tutoring before you do it the second time. You know, yeah. again, you probably don't need to do that until the beginning of 2023. So if you wanted to do the club plan now, and then later on add those classes, that would be perfectly acceptable as well. Okay. Um, again, keep in mind, you're, you're going to get in the Club Plus as well. All of the videos, the additional video highlight um, editing and all of that. You've got the two years of support if you need to transfer at any time. And that also applies, guys. If you go to a school, and I, I'll tell you a scenario that I had recently. I had a kid from Barbados. He's a sprinter. Very good kid. Went to, got a full ride scholarship to Troy, a very good NCAA Division I school, and him and the coach had a falling out a couple of months ago. He's been there for a year already, happy, everything's fine, and then him and the coach just didn't see eye to eye, eye, to eye on a couple of things, and the kid's like, I need to leave this school, I gotta go. He calls us and asks for a transfer, and I'm like, a transfer, we're gonna charge you $3,000 to change schools, because we've got to do the whole process again. Um, if he'd have taken the Club Plus, he could have just called us and said, hey, transfer me and we'll do it in a heartbeat. No problem. But he took a, he took the cheaper program back originally um, a couple of years ago, got to the school and then to do the transfer, we're basically charging him $3,000, you know, to basically do the process again. So the Club Plus has got a lot of benefits. It's it's worth it if, you know, um, it, it's, yeah. a, it's a bit of a, I don't know, a safety net, if you will, yeah. for a few different things. Um, so that's why I would recommend that that program for you specifically. Um, it gets okay. basically gets everything you need um, yeah. throughout the night. And with with that, basically, ladies, we'll be working for you uh, on. The, if you get the club plus, we'll be working for you for the next 
three years and potentially two more years if you you know if you need that help with transferring later on which you know it, it yeah. saves you in the long run i think um there are some other things that you might want from the other programs like the health insurance um if you wanted to add that in health insurance here for someone like your age uh, you know anybody under the age of 20 um, is going to be about a thousand to a thousand five hundred dollars per year we we have insurance policies um you know that you can that you can add in there but it's really not something you need to worry about until you're arriving here um yeah. so some some people say no no it's all right i'll just get it then one benefit is I had a girl started school last year. She started working with us in 2018 and she bought the insurance policy. The insurance policy in 2018 was $700. By the time she arrived, the same insurance policy was $1,200. So she's, you know, we, we, were oblig we were obligated to use that health insurance when she arrived based on the original yeah. price, not on the new price. So she didn't have to pay anything yeah. extra, we take the hit for that. So it, it is worth it if you're doing something over a long period of time. Um, but I mean, insurance, pri insurance prices never go down. They always go up, so but, yeah. Um, so yeah, any, anything to clarify for you in amongst all of that? I know this is a lot of information I'm throwing at you all at once, but happy to answer anything off the top of your head that you'd like to know more about or that you don't understand from either of you. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I can still hear you fine. So, but yeah. Um, yeah. All <laughs> so, ah, uh, that's what it is. So, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll leave this with you. You've got the document, you've got the services and um, have a, have a good look through it and pick, pick it apart. Um, you know, have a chat as a family. Um, and what I'll do is maybe I'm traveling this weekend for a, a tournament to the Caribbean. Um, but uh, when I get back, maybe, I think I fly back on Monday. Um, so maybe we can get together Tuesday or Wednesday of next week and, and discuss. Next week for that tournament. Ah, okay, so you won't be around. But she's, she's got, she's, she's training starts tomorrow for the full two weeks. Oh, okay. So she, yeah, she's got a bit of a head full okay. for the next Okay, so right. So should we maybe put a date for? And this gives you some time to absorb all of this information. Maybe let me see. That's two weeks you said. So maybe like the first week of May. Is that appropriate? Yeah, she'll fly back. She'll fly back home on the second of May. Okay. And then and then she'll be home from then. Okay, so maybe I'll put I'll put a note in to give you a buzz on like the Wednesday, Wednesday the fourth. Yeah. yeah. And we can we can review this again. We can you know I'm sure by then yeah. you've thought of some things that you'd like to know more about. All of that. Okay. We'll do that. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right, ladies. Excellent. Again, if you need anything from me in the meantime, let me know. Please keep me up to date with how you're doing with the with the thing that you're going to. That'd be very interesting for me to yeah. keep tabs on. I like to be able to see what's happening with that. And then, yeah, if you need, if you have any questions, even if you're just randomly walking through the supermarket and you think of something, throw the, throw the question in the group chat and uh, I'm happy to, to answer that stuff on the fly. Okay, thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. You're welcome. Ciao. Good night. Bye.